Welcome! Welcome to Not Fest Daily, Kirk. How are you? I'm doing great. You have to tell me a little bit about this dope spread you've got going on over there today, because there's, there's a lot on that table. <laughs> uh, it's just, just to make sure I don't get bored during the interview, I got uh, some sushi. Wow, okay. Some uh, mashed potatoes and uh, a little bit of champagne. I have to say, there's no intention of this being boring whatsoever, so you better stay away from those snacks until the end. <laughs> All right, I'll try. <laughs> now you'll very soon share your third record class. Yo, that's not trying, Kirk. I, 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 I'm, I'm already bored. Wow. Okay. I see. I need to dance for you or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, very soon you will be releasing your third album, Classics, and we're less than a month away from it coming out. So run me through all the emotions right now, aside from hungry, because that's very clear. This is why you don't eat during an interview, Kirk. I'm sorry. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> yeah, we're, uh, yeah, we're just excited. We can't wait for people to hear it. Uh, with this one, we just tried to uh, push some limits for ourselves and just kind of just kind of make it something crazy for people to hear. And uh, we, we know people haven't heard anything like it, so we're curious to hear what uh, people's reactions are. Right, and I know that when it comes to the album release, the mixing and sound design was done by Devin Townsend. So how hyped were you when you connected with Devin and knew he'd be such a great key piece on the release? Oh, it was awesome. So we, uh, we chose Devin particularly because... Like with his music, there's a lot of uh, sound effects and textures and that, that sort of thing. So we we were talking to EJ at Prosthetic about who we might want to help mix the album. And some people we thought about were more of a technical engineers. Like you don't really, most people don't know their names. It's just a, they, they're, they're more attuned to dialing in frequencies and getting the perfect kind of thing. Right. But Devin Townsend's approach, uh, I've been a fan of him. Uh, for a little while, so I knew that like his approach to producing is more uh, based in textures and sound effects, that sort of thing. So when we linked up with him, we just told him, "Dude, go insane, make it as weird as possible. There's nothing too crazy you can do, and just uh, add textures to it, make it ridiculous." And then, and then we also used his mastering mastering engineer Troy Glesner to kind of get it tightened up. In a more of a more machine on it because we produced every all of our other albums, and okay. I mean I'm not I'm not the best, but there's there's certain certain technical aspects that were a little rough around the edges on some of our other ones. So this kind of gave it that professional kind of hone in thing on it to make it make it sound really good. I love hearing how you told him to go as weird as possible because something that's really fun about your music is just the vast array of nuances. There's pop, there's some electronica, of course, the metal. You have such unique and infectious vocals on it. So when you went into writing the release, did you really want to have no boundaries? Because somehow all these different nuances work together flawlessly. Yeah, so we, when we started, it was, we started writing it right around March, 2020. It was right when the pandemic started. Yeah, um, good, yeah, good work. And then uh, we were just sitting there. We're like, dude, let's, let's, not, uh, let's not be shy to do anything. And then, so a lot of the elements are things we, we added ourselves and kind of uh, just if we try certain things to see if they were just too crazy, and they usually weren't. So that would motivate us to make it even crazier. And then we just kind of wanted to see if we could freak ourselves out, basically. Okay. And you did that mission accomplished? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we're course, with it. And of course, as we begun the interview, we're checking out Kara. The track is being exclusively premiered through NotFest.com. And in the music video for the track, you're sitting down in the middle of a desert in front of a television. So if something had to be playing on that screen other than your great other music videos, which movie or show would you have loved to be playing in that setting? John Wick 4. Okay. <laughs> that was so quick. Mm -hmm. Any reason? Just a huge fan of the previous films. I love them. He's such a badass. Yeah, we just we just like John Wick. Okay. For me, it's if you screw with dogs, game over. Yeah. I get you. Definitely exactly. on that same line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Well, I want to mention how I love how on Planet Silver Screen you had Cyborg Part 2, The City, and you kind of carried over that format with Prostitute Part 2, Pretty Woman Makes Money, which is a kind of a cool little Easter egg for continuity, but I'd love to hear more about that track from the album since it's yet to be released. Tell me a little bit more about Prostitute Part 2. <laughs> so yeah, that's how we started writing it was we were talking about uh, how we did Cyborg Part 2. Like we should bring back something from the EP. And then uh, it's funny with that one. Matt Matt doesn't play guitar, but he the riff in there that goes bam ba ba da bam ba ba da. Matt was just sitting there in my room while we were recording, and he started playing that riff. Just he was just holding the guitar, kind of just fucking around. And uh, it, we we figured it was it was in a similar tempo as Prostitute. So there's a couple riffs we reused, and then we started using a. We kind of continued the story of Prostitute, uh, part one. And that that song is a it's just about it's a a guy falling in love with a stripper and then mm -hmm. she ends up stealing all his money in his car. Oof. And that's about it. That's about it. It's easy yeah. as that. <laughs> Super yeah. straightforward plot for a track. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the last thing that I wanted to ask you about is come this November, you'll be hitting the road with Sarah Longfield across America. So does it feel a little surreal knowing that you'll be out touring again, doing what you love and just back at it? Yeah, we can't wait. We uh, Our last tour was, it was around November, November 2019. And uh, we're luckily we were able to get a tour this time because it was impossible to book for a while back. But then... Uh, you know, we're just stoked to play out and kind of, uh, or we've been working on our live set like crazy. And it's just sounding better and better. But a lot of our, uh, we, we've just dialed in our sound to the point where live, we just, uh, it sounds just perfect. And like, we think, uh, if anyone saw us live before, this will, this will be kicked up a notch. Okay. I have an idea for you, though. I think you should eat during the set. Just, I'm just throwing it out there, you know? Yeah, next time, that. You did. Okay. And next time, warn me, too, so I can have a setup so I can eat when I'm I'm a little a little bored, too. Just, yeah, just so it goes both ways. Head it's the only way to do interviews. <laughs> well, I'm going to say, Kirk, thank you very, very much for taking the time, for hopping on, for sharing this wonderful array of food you got going on over there. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank <laughs> you.